My name is Jeremy Walton and I lost everything. Let's go. Don't worry, this story has a happy ending, but if you're a filmmaker who works for clients and travels, then I have some important information for you. I think you'll learn a thing or two with this story so you don't make the same mistakes. I will need a drink for this. I'll try to keep this short, so sit back, relax, and if you're a filmmaker, hear me out. I travel a lot for work and have learned to manage airports really well. It's a different world and you have to learn quickly to navigate your traveling details. I was on a pretty big trip that took me from Los Angeles to Atlanta for a quick layover, then into North Carolina at about midnight. It looks like a straightforward trip that consisted of the flight, rental car, and hotel. Or so I thought. One thing I recommend you do is fly one full day before your shoot. I had to film on a Monday and I got in late Saturday, early Sunday. It just worked out that way for this trip. The one thing you should always try and avoid when traveling is a connecting flight. Never a good idea. This was actually my first connecting flight for a job and I think you know where this story is going. I have my camera and lenses on me at all times in my backpack. This never leaves my side. It's either in the overhead bin or under the seat in front of me. If you wanna know what bag I use, have a look at Don't Waste Your Money Choosing a Camera Backpack, where I go into great detail about the options you have and what I like. The problem is my bag that's under the plane. I use the Temba attache case and I have a bunch of equipment in there that's vital to my production. I can't fit everything in my camera bag. For the last five plus years, I've been flying Delta and love a lot of things that company provides. I'm actually a Diamond Medallion member and the perks are totally worth it. No matter what airline you fly with, there will be delays at some point. That point was today. Delays are the worst when you have a connecting flight. We landed in Atlanta and had to run to the next gate. Well, let's call it a very fast strategic walk. Of course, the gate we needed was on the complete opposite side of the airport. <sighs> Luckily, we made it. I sat down on the plane, relaxed a bit, until this overwhelming fear washed over me. I made it, but did my bags make it? That's another issue when you have a connecting flight. I talked about my equipment bag, but let's not forget I have a suitcase full of clothes. I need those too. We took off shortly and I knew I was in trouble. What you need to do if you're not doing it already is get some Apple AirTags. For the price, it's worth it. What this allowed me to do as I was taking off is see that both my bags were still at the Atlanta airport and not on the plane. Yay! Obviously, people who want to steal your gear will know you have them, but I use them so I know where my stuff is and if the airline misplaced my bags, I can give them an exact location of where they're at. That's worth the price of an AirTag. When I landed, I went to the baggage department and explained my situation. They said the bags should be on the next flight, which wasn't until 7 a.m. This is why you don't wanna fly in the day before the shoot or the night before. It's important to leave some room for air. I had all of Sunday to get my stuff. I know you're thinking, great, the situation is solved and I get to have a good night's sleep. Oh, we're just getting started with this story. Another part of the traveling experience is renting a car. It's pretty important. I do have a filmmaking travel tip series and I explain sky miles, points, hacks, and if you like this video or want more filmmaking travel tips, comment below and let me know what you wanna see. I usually rent from Enterprise or Hertz. Because of my Amex Platinum card and Delta Diamond status, it's mostly Hertz, but this time the rates were out of control. It was so expensive except for this one company. And I thought, people use this company all the time. How bad could it be? It can be bad, like really bad. I called ahead and told them the flight was delayed because their counter closed at midnight. They said they have my flight details and would wait. I was 15 minutes late and when I got there, do you think they waited? Nope. I called their support line. I was basically told there's nothing they could do. So I had to get an Uber to my hotel that night and back to the airport the next morning to get my bags. We're talking 45 minutes there and even longer during rush hour the next morning. That was a pricey trip. When I got to the counter, I explained my situation to the agent. He listened, kept typing, and said nothing. He had no problem taking my credit card for the reservation, but when I brought the situation up again, he said it happens all the time. There's nothing he can do about it. He can get his manager, but he'll say the same thing. I was pretty shocked. I told him, I know it's not your fault, but that's not the best customer service. This was my first time using your company and it will most likely be the last. He shrugged his shoulders 
and gave me my paperwork. I try and find some positive in situations like this, but this one, you just gotta move on. Finally got my car and got my bags. Having the air tags, I was able to see them on the move and when they arrived. That really made a difference. Seriously, get some air tags. Could this be it, the end of the story? Nope. I got to my hotel, it was now mid-morning on that Sunday. I wanted to relax and do a little editing. I tried to turn on my computer, and what do you know? It didn't want to turn on. Uh... I tried everything and before I knew it, I was off to the Apple store. Keep in mind, it was an hour away. When I got there, it was an hour wait. Another hour to diagnose the problem. The result, they had to ship it off for service. It was all under warranty, but I had no computer. Although Apple does have a 14 day return policy on computers, so I'll let you assume what I did. Always carry a credit card. At times I've brought extra cameras, lights, batteries, practically every accessory, but I never thought to bring an extra computer. I was on my computer the flight over and the next morning it crashed. That's how quickly things can change. I can't stress enough how much I would have been screwed flying in Sunday night to work Monday. Coming in a day early really saved me. I know it's not always possible, but keep in mind what happened to me and try and avoid these issues. You really have to take precautions when traveling. By Monday morning, it was all good and the shoot went great. My next stop was to drive to Boston and on the way, I mean, it makes sense, right? I'm not going to get into this issue, but the tire was low, I brought it back to the closest rental place and they gave me a new car. Before I left the parking structure, I mean, at this point, what else could go wrong? Had to bring that car back to get another car and to top it off, two weeks later I got a bill for $250 for a new tire and another $250 for a tow that never happened because I brought the car to them. In the end, they did make it right. They dismissed those charges, reimbursed me for the Uber rides, and gave me a discount on the rental days. Although, I would have paid full price for the rental to not have those issues. By the time I got back to LA, my Apple computer was fixed and waiting for me. I learned a lot on this trip. It was an experience with a lot of issues. At times, filmmaking is just solving problems, and that's what I had to do. I wanted to make this video to show you it's not always fun in games. Even though I've been lucky enough to not really have any major issues on my travels, it can happen and you don't know when that might be. You have to be prepared. You have to think ahead and even then something new might pop up and throw a wrench in your plans. That's life. I've been on many trips since. I've been out of the country a couple times and besides overpacking, it's been awesome. If you have the opportunity to travel as a filmmaker, it can be a wonderful experience. Take what you've learned here and apply it to your travels to save you some heartache. Well, there you have it, my crazy filmmaking travel story. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hit that like button because there's definitely more on the way. Subscribe so you don't miss out. Leave a comment if you have questions. Until next time, it's a wrap.